everybody. We have the roundtable crew for a wonderful topic. And we have Abby, Denise, Laura yep. Chapman, Heather Hartford Hilton, or Hilton Hart. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're going to discuss kids, rainbow kids, indigo kids, crystal kids, and star seeds and other things, earth angels. Uh, because a, there's a lot of controversy about it. There's a lot of confusion about it. And Eric, I love you so much. Love you, baby. So who wants to start? Heather, you're on. And uh, Eric, tell us. She's muted. She's muted. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Eric said, Eric said, I love you very much, mom. Love you. Love you. Love you. Um, you. I love you too. And he, <sighs> Really, we came up with this idea uh, through Eric to do to talk about light workers and um, crystal children, indigo children, star seeds, rainbow children, and all that because there we wanted to hear from him what the hell this is all about. So the light the light worker thing he's saying is um you know it's 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 becoming so widespread now and growing so much in number that um, we really need to get out there what's happening and why. And why this is, you know, the, 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 the light workers are basically, um, it, it's becoming, it's, it's an awakening. You know, it's becoming more conscious of the fact that we're something more than physical human beings. Um, part of something bigger, like, like all one. Um, light workers, it, it, it's, Okay, so it, it, it can be spur. He says it can be sparked by a um, a huge life event, and the and you can feel the shift, and you can't really go back once you're awake. Mm. So once a light worker, always a light worker, and then um, and then you can have you know people who come into this life as a light worker and and just know that they are light workers but it's basically doing um doing uh giving so he's showing me um we turn on the light by following the passion and the light that sparks us within and then we share it with others so it's like answering a calling answering a calling by tuning in and taking an action without fear. So it's being the light without having the fear of to, to have to explain or convince to others why you're doing what you're doing or, or how, why you feel the way you feel. So, um, so he's saying this to me, which is really, really, I love this. I love this. I'm going to write it down. Light workers equals working your light. Hmm. I love that. Cool. I love that. So anyone, anyone can be a light worker by choosing to be a light worker. You're not, you're not chosen one. You choose. It's all about intention. All right. So, um, Laura, how do you know if you're a light worker right now? I mean, you can become one, but how do you know? What are the signs, the symptoms? Um. Well, a lot of it is just a feeling you just kind of have this like there's simple there's it's such a huge topic um but there's like little things where it could be as simple as like you just kind of feel like something's watching you or you kind of see like a little black shadow on the corner of your eye or you kind of just you know get those goosebumps so it can be as small as that or it can be like getting those light bulb moments where you just kind of know something and then it ends up happening or you know something and you think to yourself, that was not my thought. <laughs> where did that come from? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different um, aspects of it. But every single person has the ability within them because um, we're all souls. We all have a soul within this body. So every single person has the ability to literally connect to our true home and also other souls that have the same soul, you know, and other worldly beings, Eric's saying too, that he's like, you, you can connect with everybody. <laughs> um, but basically it's just like, there's so many different 
ways that this can happen. It can be in your contract or it can just be something traumatic happens that wakes it up. It can be um, so many. Do you guys want to jump in? There's so many different yeah, ways it's, it comes it's, out. It's like, you, it's like you feel like you're here for a reason. Yeah. Um, oh. And, and yeah. A, lot of, a lot of light workers stay in the spiritual closet for a long time. And that's very common because you're, you're scared to be who you truly are in this world, who you truly Especially meant to be. Especially if you're raised in a, a, a deeply Christian, uh, you know, or. Yes. Orthodox. Yes. Because you're taught be, uh, yeah. and it's all based on fear. So mm -hmm. anyone who chooses to bring out their bright light is a light worker. Um, mm -hmm. The only requirement to be a light worker. Um, okay. What are you showing? Okay. Uh, okay. Connect to connect with your soul, your authentic light within, and presenting it to the world. You're drawn to help others. They're, the only requirements are are to um, to spread your light within, to 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 allow your light to come out. Right. That makes. Um, and and this is this is. He's saying it is it, it's order. This this the reason why he has he he's like there's. The universe, the source, uh, pure source energy universe has beacons of light workers all around the world, and they're very spread out. And the reason for this, and the reason for this, they're significantly starting to light up now, is because in order for Mother Earth to heal and to survive, we need global awakening. Yeah. And well, maybe I think Gaia will survive. It's oh, just, yeah. If we don't protect Gaia, we will be extinct. All right. So, how many light workers are Earth angels, star seeds, or yeah, you know, that that? I mean, is it very common? Eric's saying an infinite number, because yeah. it really is a choice, and it's really a matter of perspective of where your mind is. He says it actually is where your mind is sometimes in the moment. So he's bringing up the fact that a lot of uh, light workers have been through some really traumatic things. And you'll find that a lot with mediums, even if they don't mm -hmm. like just tell you off the cuff or just anybody that, that has really found their spirituality. It's through some kind of like really traumatic event. And um, it doesn't mean it has to be traumatic to the outside world, but it, Eric's saying it needs to be traumatic enough for you that it allows your body to step outside your soul or your soul to step outside your body. Sorry, I'm a little dyslexic even, he even just, during uh, mediumship. <laughs> Abby, he just pointed out um, tuning in and taking action. Exactly. And um, he's saying that like a lot of work, light workers, they, they, the way you can tell from the beginning you're a light worker, he's saying is you just feel, you just feel to the extreme, like all the way through your toes, you just like, really feel like when some he goes you know mom that feeling when, when somebody makes you feel really 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 bad and he's like showing me actually an image of you sitting next to him on his bed when he was little he says he was in the third grade and he was dealing with bullies like really recognizing oh. what bullies oh, and you were trying to explain to him and you were you were like really having a hard time because obviously your little boy is going through this bullying and he's showing me like conversations between you and Rune about how to approach this right and you were sitting next to him and you had a book and you were trying to read to him and you were trying to like within the book kind of answer his questions and trying to comfort him and um so he's just really like emphasizing um the need to feel and, and uh, for light workers, um, be, because that's, he says, feeling is just a really big part of it, as in you just feel to the extreme. Yes. I and, remember it like every night with Eric, but also the other kids, we would have a bedtime ritual that I never did not do. And it was um, reading them a story or two. Um, Tickle cummy, tickle back. I don't know what that was. But then before Video that, I would us. sing them a song and it was like, oh, so bad. I don't know why they didn't stay awake with night terrors. <laughs> it was either Edelweiss, <laughs> America the Beautiful, or Barges. Out of my window, looking at the night, I would 
uh, whatever. Anyway, so that was it. And it was a big <laughs> thing with us. So yeah. I sing my son camp songs before he falls asleep. Oh. I sing him Cougar, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. So we so now we're talking about indigo children. It was exactly the segue I was gonna go into. Oh, good. <laughs> yep. Okay, go, Laura, go ahead, Laura. Laura. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Laura. Um, so we were talking about traumatic events. And so mostly you would see that with the light workers who are indigo or star seed. Indigos I find really fascinating because um, I was talking to Eric about this earlier and me and him were both very similar, um, feeling like we had indigo in our um, chart in our contract when we came to earth. So the telltale signs of an indigo is usually diagnosed with ADD or ADHD and oh, suffer yes. from mental illness. Um, they're very rebellious towards authority. They're creative, um, intuitive, and they strive to be authentic. Like they just don't want to fit in. It makes them really uncomfortable to fit in or be anyone that they're not. Um, oh my God. That is your sister, Michelle. Michelle must be an indigo, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they have a lot of trouble with, they have a lot of trouble with um, feeling worthy too and feeling whole because they have like this piece of them that's really missing and what our real home is, we'll call it heaven. <laughs> um, but yeah, many of them have actually had experiences with negative entities when they're younger. So regular entities, but then negative ones as well. So like shadow people or people that oh are just- Oh my God, that's amazing. Cause that's true with Eric and uh, Michelle. Michelle changed overnight when she, when once Annika was born and at the same month, she broke her leg in Norway. She changed overnight. She was like this beautiful light. And all, all of a sudden she got super negative and negative entities were involved in that. So, yeah. So with an indigo child, like, or just an indigo in general, basically they need to have the experience of the negative and the positive so that they can really learn like deep compassion because their mission, and you can really see this um, with uh, Eric as well as maybe their sister. Is that true? Yes, that's right. Um, just really spreading their message like across the globe, spreading their message loud and clear so that people can feel um, oneness and peace. And their huge mission is just to crack, crack open the corrupt system and move towards uh, this utopia on earth, basically. They're, he's, wow. he's showing me like an earthquake. He's like, they, they came to shake things up. Yeah. The, the, these are the these are the ones that we call old souls mm -hmm. okay and and they have they have they're they're super emotional and they have higher expectations of themselves and of others like higher than than normal and that causes a lot of you know issues and rebellion and like laura was saying you know like the like the system is stupid we need to fucking change this yeah. shit Oh you know, I'm not, I'm not going to follow, Eric I'm not going to follow the hey. rules. Oh yeah. They won't, oh, they won't compromise. What? They won't compromise to fit in because no. they don't fit no. into the box. You know, that pink. So the, I don't need no education. Education. <laughs> yeah. My mind right now. <laughs> what, what am I and so what are other kids? Sarcy. What are you? Indigo, oh, no, I'm not crystal rainbow, whatever, but what? None of the above. Okay, so it indigos paved the way. So you had, um, Eric was definitely an indigo. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I want to say Michelle is a, um, Michelle's an indigo. The child, the, her child is a star seed. And then you have a crystal. You have a crystal grandchild. Okay. Um, uh, so this well, I've, this I've is got, the one. I've got Harper. Oh, is this what you were? Juliet, uh, Easton, Liam, and Arlene. One's a rainbow, I'm hearing, and that one has delays, um, a little bit of delays, I'm feeling like. And, I and, the, and the crystal, the crystal is like a very calm presence. Like, can't doesn't like loud noises or when it's too, like, busy okay just Arlene, a really calm Arlene is um is the eldest of my grandchildren she's michelle's daughter was she 
Eric said she's, she's a star. Right I just got from the source. She she's a star seed. Star seed. Oh. I also got that Annika yes. a star seed. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. All right. What they about have various. Easton is um, almost four, Michelle's child, and Liam is two. Uh, what do you think? Uh, Crystal. For both? I'm feeling like for both. There's sort of like a mix of crystal and star seed, which is possible. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a there, there's a mix of crystal and star seed. So they have, so they like music. Yeah. Um, and they have some really special extrasensory gifts. Yes. Like things yes. that we haven't seen before. Cool. What about um, Christina's kids, Harper, who's like, oh, almost three. And Juliet, the newborn, I mean, just an infant. We have. Sorry, guys. I'm getting star Who's seed and crystal inspired? again. From I'm Bergamo? getting. Yes. Who's the rainbow? Anybody? Who's who's the Aquarius? The, the one that the, I feel I just see I keep seeing somebody who had like delays as they were growing delays with speech, just delays in school, like a little bit of like a learning curve. That's kind of what I'm seeing for the rainbow kid, but I can't. Oh, I that's really that, well, that's it's the too two. To, it's too early to know for. That's the two-year-old. Okay. Two-year-old. Yeah, Eric Liam? says that's the two-year-old. Liam? Yeah. Okay. Laura, can you can you tap in to explain rainbow? Oh, more? okay, yeah. yeah Let's we'll um, talk about rainbow kids. How do you know if you have a rainbow child? Um, you so about indigo, but what about rainbow? So mostly, Let's talk about crystal. Yeah, so mostly the rainbows are born after two thousand. Um, they have a like a rainbow aura. They have a very colorful aura. They're e they easily manifest. They have this weird ability that they are able to like clean toxins and like junk food out of their body and also energies. Um, they're born with zero karma and they have no attachments to past lives. So the rainbow children would be like the pure essence of like divinity. They would be very close to angels or like the Palladians, which are just like 100% good wanting to just make the planet beautiful and um, divine. Mm. Um, the, the question I have is, I, is he's showing me that there's, you know, there's an order, indigo, crystal, and star seed. Do rainbows come after star seed um, or between crystal and star? It's, they're all kind of lumped in together. It's weird. Okay. Uh, That's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, but the rainbows mostly are just very connected spiritually. They're very connected spiritually. Wow. He's showing me, and I don't know, Laura if, and Abby, if you see this too, but he's showing me that it's all about it aura. That it's all about I what's in the aura Northern and what's lights. what they're. That's like what I. Yeah. Like the Northern Colors. Lights. That's how Wait, they ended up. Again? Start, uh, Abby, start all over again, please. I, I, while she, this whole time you were talking about what we were just talking about, I was seeing the Northern Lights. Oh, yeah. The reason yeah, like, the auras are like the Northern Lights, the colors. So he's, show, he's showing me though that the crystal children, you can't see their aura with the naked eye. Yeah. Wow. Like, like sometimes I can see the auras and colors, but crystal children, it's more like a, like a, or like like a, a Oh like yeah, color. it's like you can't you can't make out a color. Why? And they are very attracted they're to crystals healers. for a reason because they're healers. Yeah, they work solely with the light. You'll never very you'll never catch ahead, them working sorry. with dark entities or even really being afraid of dark entities because they just have so much light. They take care of Mother uh. Earth. They get their energy from Mother Earth. Um, they speak to, to, uh, telepathically and they're really good at clairvoyance because they have that just this connectivity where they just see with the third eye, they can speak with the clairs. It's, it's so because I know nothing about this. I just want to tell you the imagery I'm seeing right now, Laura, so you can help me. I'm seeing like um, in Hawaii, like the volcanoes. Mm -hmm. like yes. Volcanoes, like I'm seeing like Mayans. 
but like a lot of like um real just like i said mayans hawaiians incas um that yeah you know he showed I'm so he's showing me the the like you in that just sparked this too abby is he's showing me the aura of the crystal and it and it's almost like electromagnetic energy and he says that they they mess with electricity they like did. they oh. they can they can make lights like flash on and off and they can fuck with your Wi-Fi and all that shit. Most of He's the like, most of the kids nowadays are crystal kids. A lot of the Gen Z kids are crystals. Yeah. Gen Z, really. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did we talk about Gen Z? I mean crystals? What did we? Um, no, we did. Yeah. We did. Rainbow. We gotta talk about star seeds. <laughs> star seeds. Wait, okay. So oh. which of my kids uh, range is, is it a rainbow? Uh Liam? The two year old. Yeah, there's one that's a rainbow, but the majority are crystals and okay, starseed yeah. mix. Crystal and starseed, yep. Are all of them starseeds? Feels like they have to be, Eric is saying. Just because there's... of the, the connection that you have with the divine, the connection with Eric, um, it just amplifies that they're able to like connect with him, connect for the channel. It's interesting. There, Erica? but there's... There's Sorry. an indigo in there that's that's going to be like the, the overly emotional one. Is that, that, uh, that Arlene, the eldest grandchild? The eldest that that doesn't like that fights against authority. <laughs> Good, like her mama. That's an that's it. That's cool. she's she's Eric, an indigo. Yeah. Eric told me from the very beginning that she really was split off directly from source, that she really didn't have any other lives. But yeah. she has been an observer of many past lives. And when she was little, when I put her in timeout for some reason, I mean, she like freaked out. Is that the world's on fire? It's going to burn. She, she kept conjuring up these crazy past lives. And, yep. you know, I think it's, and I asked, did she live these lives? No, no, she did not. She has been, a, a, you know, split up from source observer of different past lives so you guys your grandmoms and granddads and moms and dads you know you need to look at these children and figure out you know what they are because you need to know in order to better relate to them so maybe i didn't understand where are you? okay tell me what my kid is that might be a good one to understand them yeah well, and to be able to relate to them what your kid is i, I want to i think i should do that eric or no yeah yeah there, there there's there it helps to have the guidance on what um you know wh where they come from and why they act the way they act because because uh, us who are are before the indigo generation we were we were e more easily we conformed and we had no oh. problem with that we had no problem with that but once the indigo started coming in all hell broke loose because they were paving the way to help heal us and help us grow and um to to pave the way for change to increase peace and harmony and acceptance and that and it had things have to blow up in order to heal yes. You got to destroy to rebuild. So yes. Eric, you want me to, to offer that to people? Because, oh my God, that's like, should, would that be worth it? Help people? To, it's, to he, he's to saying it's part, it's part of the, the class. It's part of a class. Okay. Teaching. Yeah. What about, I wanted to, Eric, there's like 41 or more plus spiritual contracts so far. And I thought it would be interesting to have people be able to, for very inexpensive, to know what spiritual contracts they came in with and also which are revocable, which are not. Do you think I should offer that to people or not? Would it be helpful or would it do more harm than good? I think, I'm sorry. I, I think that um, personally, it's part of the lesson is the journey, Eric's saying, in finding um, what your path is, because it's all about growing, man. That's what he's saying. He says, you come here to earth, to live, to grow, to fight, to have chaos, to have passion. But, but, but it might be nice to know which contracts you've already honored. 
revoke them, and then deal with the rest. Wait, wait. He says, Mama, Mama, Mama. He says, but why? He says, but why? He says, but why? He says, that's not your place to say that. That's a really earthly thought, he says. No, I don't want me to say it. I want them to say it. (laughs) But he's saying it's an earthly thought to like put it like that. He says, you got to think, he says, you come here for a reason and a purpose. And part of it is the journey, not the destination. Bam. That's what he says. My drop. But no, (laughs) I'm still going to do it. I don't care. Now I want to, I want people to know what spiritual contracts are done that they need to have revoked. And then they can deal with the other shit. He's he's screaming at you right now. This is usually Heather and not me. I just want to put that out there. He's <laughs> screaming at you. Thank why? you. He's going, but why? But why? Why is that important? He says, that's an earthly thought of why that's important. He says, get out of your mind. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'll let people choose. I don't know. All right. So um, that's really good. It's really good. Okay. So um, what else? Starseeds. Darcy. Yeah. Now there I really Darcy like, quizzes out there online. I uh, really like Star Oh seeds. wow. Um, Are they good? They're really good. Um a lot of them choose like screwed up families though, or like just screwed up situations in the beginning. Um and, mm-hmm. it, and again, a lot of it has to do with learning deep compassion and quickly having them grow. And it had a lot to do with what Abby was saying earlier about um like almost kind of stepping out of the body like the body gets a beat down and it kind of steps over and is like starts to ask questions and starts to connect to the ethereal world and it just helps them grow and connect much quicker it's really a trauma they come to kind of have trauma and grow and then help people they are Mm. the truest form of um, alchemists you will find on earth and The cool thing about star seeds is they come from all over the universe. So these might be aliens or these might be otherworldly beings like fairies or whatever. Um, And they, they come to help the planet ascend. And I asked Eric about this earlier and I said, well, you know, what need, like why? And he just said to shift the planet for accelerated growth. It needs to accelerate. Um, many other planets have done this before and um, it's our turn. <laughs> and he just says, step up to the plate. It's our turn. So, oh, I mean, maybe I should uh, offer that to people. Are you a star seed? Three bucks. Yes or no. What are you? It might be interesting. You know, because so, it's a, 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 a very often, I just want to help people. Very often, feel like they don't belong here, and they don't know why, and they get depressed. And also, I will say that Earth angels, um, they, like you said, guys, they go through a lot of trauma. But the only reason for that is because they come up in, incarnate in, incarnate in with a much higher vibrational frequency, so they can actually survive that trauma yeah okay they are strong enough energetically vibrational frequency wise to put this shit on their plate and so kudos to them and light workers the same star seeds perhaps the same i don't know you tell me there's very there's very much a similarity between the angels on earth and the star seeds mm-hmm. and that's and and so these star seeds are coming in from all different parts of the universe in order to support the angels on earth. Okay. Um, they're they're because the angels on earth are here. They're, they're very much similar to star seeds I'm seeing. And I'm not sure where that connects, but he's showing me that the, there's certain yeah, uh, uh, extraterrestrials who are meant to come here to help accelerate our growth and our healing and our um, evolution and it's human evolution like us as humans we're evolving to very much smarter wiser more clairvoyant we can manipulate energy Um, there are things that we don't we're not even aware of yet that that these star seeds can do Eric saying, remember, we're multi-dimensional beings. Oh, yeah. I was hearing that too. He's saying oh, that um, one, it's not one more. Of, 
I'm sorry. One more thing, Abby, that, that he just said that, that uh, um, earth angels have starseed children. Oh, always? They're very connected, either children or grandchildren. They always have that starseed connection. Are all earth angels starseeds? Are most? No, no, all the earth angels are connected to starseeds. Oh. They have starseeds that come into their lives to help uh, sort of roll with what the, the, the earth angels have started. It's like carrying on in a, uh, in a, to the 10th degree or 100th degree. So Laura, is it important for people to know whether they're star seeds or not? Or whether they're um, it, or not or what? All this uh, is it important? Because it just Eric like is just saying that it would help them to cope. Um, it would be helpful if people had uh, like coping skills or like, like, you know how they have therapists that teach you about like emotions and how the brain works and how to cope. Like there aren't coping mechanisms or help for light workers. And so he's saying for people that are star seeds, for people that are all of these different things or who channel, like it would be really great to have like someone you can actually talk to who can, you know, tell you what's going on, help you to not feel crazy and, and show you kind of like, what are your divine gifts? How can you use the, how can you heal the, the things that bother you? How can you work through it and cope through it? But then also how can you um, use those abilities and like heal the world, help the world? He's actually showing me that that's actually um, in the future. Like he's saying like in a hundred years from now, it's going to be part of like the basic psychology of man of is what he's saying. And like um, therapists, psychologists in the future are going to be implementing a lot of those ideas in um, what the way that they're uh, giving therapy to children and adults. So it, it's, it's, it's up and coming. We just haven't caught up with the concept quite yet. And yeah. then I also want to bring up something that he has been bringing up this entire time to me. And that's the fact that Think about like how many past lives we've had. It's infinite, really. I mean, you never really, really know while we're in our earthly bodies anyway. Um, and just the fact that it's not like what, okay, I used to be an indigo child and that is who I am. He's saying that's a fucking category. He's like, once again, earthly thought process. He says, you know, you were this person, you were that person. He says, you lived on Jupiter, you lived on Mars, who cares? He says, you lived here, there, you're, you're just as much... He's saying we're all part of, this is interesting. He's saying you're, we're all one of the whole, we're all part of the whole. And that's the bigger concept of the situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. He's saying we are all a little bit of everybody and everything. And we've all had moments in our lives where we can really connect with these things and these thoughts. And that's us connecting to those moments. And hopefully we learn from them, he says. And if we didn't, oh, well, that's why we came to earth to learn again. Yeah. And, we'll and the Chris. Again. the crystals the Go crystals ahead. are part of a part of us that teaches us that oh, so yeah. the crystals are part of us that teaches us that the indigos are part the part of us that teaches us that we don't belong in a box in a system oh yeah and the star seeds are the part of us that teaches us that we are all you know we have these gifts beyond our our cognition we we have no idea the gifts that we have so these are all parts of us we're all one he's also showing me the concept of time and i know we've talked about this many times before but um how it's not in a straight line um time is not linear it's like in and going around and forward and back and we're living our present we're living our future and we're living all of our lives infinitely at the same time um so a lot of that is a lot of these mixes of people that you're seeing right now he says it just so happens that a lot of the mixes of people coming in right now are very futuristic he says there's names for things that i'm not going to get into because he says you wouldn't even begin to relate to right now mm. that's yeah. interesting really fascinating i um i'm i'm thinking that question. okay go ahead go ahead sorry no, after that, after your question, I'm thinking that we should do some shout out readings. Yes. All right. My personal question is my, uh, one of my daughters with a newborn, the newborn is having horrible colic. And now it seems like that people don't think that people 
the consensus is this is not gas related. It's related to bacteria. So I told her, like, try this lactobacillum, the special lactobacillum, uh, whatever, probiotic. And then if that doesn't work, give her a trial on the Tramogen, which is only going to be massive, blah, 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 and keep pumping. Um, so what is your thought about Juliet? I'm seeing um, I, this, maybe they can pick up something about like the different medications, but what I was seeing is um, cranial sacral therapy or like massage therapy, just kind of helping uh, with the exhaustion and like moving energy. Okay. What do you guys pick up about the meds? I was getting an imagery of like holding the baby, how I used to hold my son, David, and like, like on your arm like this yes. and pat their yes. back. And it does, and it, it like makes them fall asleep. Um, and I was just getting that imagery of doing that, that, that could help. And it, it ties in with what Laura was just saying about moving the energy. Moving the energy, yes. It, um, he's, got, he's got some energy blocks in his sacral, sacral chakra. Okay. But it's from a past life trauma. Ooh. Um, I feel like there was a uh, traumatic blow to his abdominal cavity it's a, it's a girl but probably a boy then so yeah and um and and there's that that past life trauma that's just uh still there it's stuck okay. you gotta move that energy yeah sounds good who's who's our who's rh negative i don't know uh, okay, and then the, and then and then did they did they check the py pylori? Did they check the pylori? No, I mean I don't know. I'm just a grandma. But don't worry. Uh, okay, so I, I'm just that. getting. We're going. Uh, to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to take up time for this. Py pyloric stenosis, just just pyloric stenosis and Rh negative. That's that's those are the two things that I'm hearing. Well, it's a girl, so probably not. Pyloric stenosis, unless there's a, another child to come. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. All right, shout outs. Let's go for it. All right. Come on, ladies. What do we got? I'm getting, um, I asked Eric and he said there's someone named Christina and she has a photography fee is, oh God, I'm stuttering. Photography business that has been failing through the pandemic and that's gonna start to pick up in late spring. So don't give up um, and the wedding business will pick up as well. Like uh, just having more weddings that go without issues coming up. Good. I, I've, got a, I've got a Cheryl or a Shirley who needs a little pickup. She needs a pick me up. And you're, Eric's saying, I'm with you. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. I know you're super depressed, but hang in there. I'm right there with you. You're going to be fine. Give it some time. Good. Abby? Um, I was getting from a Timothy who's crossed over to a Beth or a Bethany that's here. And I feel like um, it, it, he was younger when he passed and it was a uh, heart issue and obesity issue due to overeating, overindulging. Um, he's saying a lot of just like early childhood traumas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he wants to give a message to Beth, Bethany. Um, he's, saying, he's saying, keep going, baby. He says, just remember to breathe. And he says, you got to make it through for both of us. And I don't know if they have a little bolt. They must have a little boy. Um, Cause he's just like referring to this little boy that he has to make it through. And for her to continue on her weight loss journey. I don't know if she's considering weight loss surgery. Um, and he's saying that, yes, it doesn't matter what you got to do. You're a mom. You got to do what you think is best to live longer for both of us. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, I've got a Zach. I've got a Zach or a Zachary on the other side, who I mean, I'm getting a suicide. Um, who is standing here with Eric and is sending love, uh, very much a strong presence, and just sending love. You know who you are. Okay. And so there's a Benjamin too. Okay. Are they both with Eric? Or are they buddies? Yeah. Yep. 
Zachary's is with Zach. I think it is, is with Eric. And then there's a Benjamin here and I'm not sure who Benjamin belongs to, but that's another, uh, he's on the other side as well. And they're like, they're all coming in. They're wanting to send love to their mothers. Oh, that's mom's new. All right. So, yeah. So those two, they're here and they're sending their love because they know you're going to be listening. Yeah. Cool. I have, I have, I have an African-American male here. Um, good looking guy. <laughs> and, uh, sorry I'm partial <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> and uh he, he's sending a message to Tina he says you'll always be my B oh. my I my first be quiet I know okay my first boyfriend was black so I loved it. He was awesome. Hey, my, my man's from, my fiance is from Ghana. You know, I don't know what to say there. Mm. <laughs> All right. So, anything else, guys? Um, I did have Eric saying there's a a woman. Well, this doesn't feel like a woman. Well, it is a woman, but it's like twenties, um, so like a young woman. Um, black. It looks like either black or brown, curly hair. And Eric was just wanting to say that he sees her and. He has been channeling with her. Um, and then I just was seeing like orbs, like this person thinks that they're seeing orbs and that is him. And they're kind of working together. He said he's training her to be able to see spirits in like orbs. Cool. Anything else? Um, Eric is showing me an image of a young man sitting in a wheelchair. I feel like he either has muscular dystrophy or some kind of paralysis mm -hmm. and he's working on like moving things with levitation. Ooh. Like, really like this, yeah, the, a channeling Eric group, uh, blog group member is, is, is really, and I feel like it might be an S name, like a Scott or something like that. Um, got glasses, kind of sandy brown hair. Anyways, he's saying, keep going, bro. He says, you're going to get it one of these days. He says, you're going to get it. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Anything like levitating else? objects in front of him. Anything else before we give y'all's information? Anything? I think that's good. All right, good. All right, everybody give your information. And then I'll have one more little thing that Paula, the documentary, and the documentary is happening, okay? She is the she and her camera crew are in Canada, can't come back to refilm things until the COVID thing list. But, but she wants me to say something. But I want you to go ahead and y'all get a pen and paper, people, or pencil and paper, whatever. Write down this information. All you guys tell us about you. Heather, you first. Heather Hilton Hartford, commongroundhealing.com. All right, Laura, you next. I'm Laura, lcryan.com or LC Ryan Psychic Medium on Facebook. <laughs> awesome. All right, Abby, you next. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abby Dagny, Bright Side Medium. You can find me on Facebook. Um, I have a website on Wix right now. I got to get a new domain name. I'm kind of slow. Can't help it. <laughs> well, it's okay with me. I'm no. full-time too. <laughs> and I have a kid. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. So Paula Marino from Aqua Marino, uh, Marina Studios. And, you know, she, uh, you guys should look up, just Google on YouTube, or just search on YouTube. Teal Swan Open Shadow Trailer. And just get a, bit of how amazing she is and how she is going to she contacted me to do a story about eric and channeling eric and everything and it's just fascinating okay but anyway she is now my youtube manager because i can't do it all anyway so she wants me to say the upcoming mini series we got going on on youtube it really beyond so the human Beyond the Medium, an in-depth look into channeling Eric Mediums featuring Jennifer Doran, Robert Burke, Veronica Drake, Tammy DeMersa, and last but not least, Denise Ramon. Of course, you guys will come in eventually later. So this series will kick off on, on, the, uh, on the CE Channeling Eric YouTube channel 
March 7th, Sunday at 2 p.m. Central Time. So you guys don't miss it and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss anything that could really change your life, okay? All right. That's awesome. Love you guys. Awesome. Love you. And Love you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, guys. <laughs> Bye. This was awesome. Thank you.